Welcome to at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Let's get a refresh on the top Arizona news of the week. Cronkite News analyzed emergency room admissions across the state and found nearly 12,000 drug users OD'd between 2009 and 2013. Cronkite News reporter Jesse Schultz joins us with an in-depth look at the data. Jesse? Earlier this year, Cronkite News documented the epidemic of heroin use in Arizona, an addiction that often starts with the misuse of prescription pills and other drugs. Officials hope that this money from the CDC will pay for new ways to fight this growing problem. But, you know, if a doctor just sends you out of the hospital or his office with 60 Percocets, an addict's just going to take them constantly until they're gone. And then now they're really hooked. For those addicted to prescription drugs, overdoses and relapses are just a normal part of life. Cronkite News found that from 2009 to 2013, almost 12,000 drug users were taken to Arizona emergency rooms because of drug overdoses involving prescription drugs, heroin, and methadone. While not all of those are fatal, the number is alarming. Banner Poison and Drug Center Information Outreach Specialist Maureen Rowland said that many of the calls to their helpline are about drugs. A lot of the calls we get are kind of accidental misuse of opioids. And then we do get the overdoses too, and those are intentional or unintentional overdoses. And some of those problems begin with doctor prescriptions. Um, we do see that people are being prescribed it younger and younger, and often unnecessarily. The CDC recognized the growing epidemic, and Arizona was one of 16 states chosen to receive money to tackle prescription drug misuse. The money will be handled by the Arizona Department of Health Services. The DEA's special really agent in charge, Douglas I Coleman, said money like this is needed for education. Problems. Kids are going to get what they can get. So we have to educate everybody about what the problems are. The Arizona Department of Health Services did not return our calls to tell us where the money would be specifically used. In the broadcast center, Jesse Schultz, Cronkite News. Arizona is full of entrepreneurs looking to create the next best thing. Cronkite News reporter Jackie Padilla caught up with a local app designer who says his product could save a life. It seems appropriate that Scott Gray works from home because his project is a personal one. He's the co-founder of Bloodhound, an app designed to help find people with dementia who may wander off. It's a situation Gray knows all too well. It's, uh... Scary. His dad suffers from dementia and once went missing for three days. He's always been there for you and suddenly you're racing around to try to help him out and you just can't. So he created an app that uses Bluetooth technology to interact with a microchip. When a person reported missing is nearby, anyone with the app is notified and given a description along with information about what to do next. It's a tool Gray wishes he could have used when he was searching for his father. It's a painful experience to wonder if your dad's freezing to death or dying. From his residence, Scott's dad made it all the way here to Indian School Park, which is about 10 miles away, and days later was found another 10 miles away. And Scott thought maybe he's not the only one in his family experiencing this and decided to take his app to an international platform. Gray is among the five finalists competing in the Phoenix Smart App Hack. It's an opportunity for app designers to go head to head for a chance to represent Arizona at the International Smart City Expo in Barcelona. What this whole plan was behind this competition was to turn urban challenges into opportunity. And Gray thinks the exposure will help people better understand what his app is all about. Missing and somebody can just be going about their day and um, help save a life. Technology that could help comfort families of those suffering from dementia. In Phoenix, Jackie Padilla, Cronkite News. App Hack will be October 7th. Three participants will be selected to rep represent Phoenix in Barcelona. Dust storms can cause us many problems like uprooted trees, high speed winds, and property damage. But those storms can also affect your pets. Reporter Jesse Schultz is in the broadcast center with details on Valley Fever. 
Yes, the dust storms can also be the cause of this lifelong sickness for Valley pets. While he may sound like your typical dog, Great Dane Relay has overcome quite a bit in his nine years. Last February, his owner noticed an abscess on his leg. So we started treating the abscess, um, and then we went back to our regular vet because he wasn't getting better. And then they tested him for valley fever. The results came back positive. The emergency vet visits, the initial medication, we were right around $2,000. Now monthly maintenance, it's about $75 a month. A recent study by University of Arizona estimates that 4% of dogs in Pima and Maricopa counties will be infected with valley fever. Arizona Humane Society veterinarian Melissa Thompson sees an average of three to four new cases of valley fever a week. Uh, we don't generally put dogs up with valley fever for adoption because the costs that are incurred for people. Professor Jason Eberhardt from Midwestern Animal Clinic says valley fever is really unpreventable. And then people go out in the environment during those times of years in the fall and the winter and then they're exposed that way. Even common activities in Arizona such as taking your dog for a hike can potentially expose them to the fungi that live in the soil that cause valley fever. Though Relay's valley fever is an added expense, the Allert family is happy he's finally healthy. Our children would be devastated without him. We are so happy that he's nine years old and we still have him. Um, it, I think that when you have an animal, you take on that financial responsibility. It's estimated that Arizona dog owners spend about $60 million a year treating their pets with valley fever. If you notice your pet has a cough, lack of appetite, or even lack of energy, take them into your vet to get a test for valley fever. The earlier it's detected, the better. In the Broadcast Center, Jesse Schultz, Cronkite News. A Mesa man and war veteran spent 30 years living homeless before a new initiative helped him find housing. Cronkite News reporter Mitch Gasada has more about the city of Mesa's initiative to end homelessness among United States veterans. Larry Hutchison served in the Vietnam War, but when he came back to the United States, he had a whole new battle, homelessness. I spent 30 years on the streets of drugs and alcohol. But now Hutchison has been provided housing. Thanks to Housing Mesa's heroes and the city of Phoenix working together to end veteran homelessness. Those who fought to protect our freedom abroad should never be left without a home when they return. That's the best thing that we can do as public servants is uh, pay respect to those who, who deserve it so much. Half a dozen congressmen spoke on Wednesday regarding the issue, including U.S. Senator John McCain, who also served in the Vietnam War. I'm so proud and grateful that today we do honor and welcome our veterans home. Hutchison, no longer homeless, said he compares life to a clock and looks forward to seeing time move forward in a positive way. Because if it goes backwards and then we remain into the past, We'll never handle the future, which is uh, counterclockwise, and clockwise is the way we need to go. Now, Mr. Hutchison is the first veteran to be helped in the city of Mesa with this initiative, but District 6 Council Member Kevin Thompson told me there's as many as 150 homeless veterans in the city of Mesa alone. He told me he wants to help all of them, just needs to take things one step at a time. Reporting for Mesa, Mitch Casada, Cronkite News. More Americans are choosing to spend their vacation dollars in Mexico. One reason, their dollars can buy more south of the border. Jennifer Souls joins us to talk about how the peso dollar exchange rate benefits tourists and other travelers. Travel experts and tourists alike see Mexico as a big bargain. In recent months, the peso has lost significant value, meaning that you can stretch your American dollar. Mexico remains among the top foreign destinations for Americans. And these days, beaches south of the border are an even bigger bargain. Just worked out great, and the peso just, it really worked for us being from the States. The peso has lost a quarter of its value, and that means travelers with dollars can get more for their money. We went there to buy a house because the peso is so high compared to the dollar. And so uh, we made an offer on a house there, and we are planning on being there November through May, and we're really excited about it. Robert Principe is just back from Mazatlan, where he and his wife now own a winter home. Americans won't save on flights or at big resorts, and those are usually priced in dollars, but they will save in bars, restaurants, and at local shops. 
I can predict that this kind of situation is going to maintain for several months because the volatility of the economy in different parts of the world. Prices in Mexico have not gone up to compensate for the peso devaluation as they have in the past. So for now, Mexico remains a great value destination if you have dollars. One travel expert I spoke with said more Americans are expected to travel to Mexico for Day of the Dead celebrations. The popular Mexican holiday will take place at the beginning of November. Live in the Media Center, Jennifer Souls, Cronkite News. The release of AZ merit scores in mid-August shows that Arizona students aren't performing well compared to the national standards. This has many parents concerned about what these scores and the move on when reading law could mean for the future of their student. Cronkite News reporter Angie Schuster talked to the State Board of Education and a local fourth grade teacher, none of whom are actually too concerned about the seemingly low test scores. 44%, that's the percentage of Arizona's third graders that scored as minimally proficient for the state's English language arts standards. In 2014, only 14% of students didn't meet the state standards for the Ames test. This dismal number, almost half of the students looks bad for the state of Arizona, but many are saying that it's actually a step in the right direction. In this room, for example, we have kids reading at all different levels. You know, at a sixth grade level all the way down to maybe a second grade level. Kids read in groups of, with kids on their own level. Because I care about these kids and I don't want them having anxiety. Sean Conway says his fourth grade class at Clarendon Elementary is no different this year than last. He'll be teaching students on a full spectrum of reading comprehension. But according to the AZ merit test, the number of minimally proficient students more than doubled in just one year. We've known for a while that um, our standards were too low, our expectations were too low, and uh, we needed to raise the bar in order to really be globally competitive and to make sure that we had a realistic picture of how our students were doing and whether they were going to be prepared to be successful. Even so, the test scores have parents concerned. Well, I think it's really natural for parents to feel sort of nervous about this. Um, you know, they've been sort of told one set of things um, based on the last test, and this is going to be a new test, and scores are going to look different. One big issue with these new test scores is whether or not the move on when reading law comes into play. The State Board of Education met at the end of August and decided not to hold back the nearly 50 percent of students who were less than proficient on the language arts section. All of those kids are already sitting in fourth grade classrooms, unless teachers recommended retention based on their really poor performance or uh, lack of ability level achievement uh, from last year. Uh, so what we are saying, we're not going to hold anyone harmless, we're not going to go backwards. Conway says he and fourth grade teachers across the state still have to teach their students the current fourth grade curriculum, but also help some students catch up. We would use strategies that we've been using for years, so reading intervention, working in small groups, having kids read on their level in our guided reading, our, our block. And that's where we put kids with other kids that have the same reading ability. The one thing that teachers and state officials want everyone to understand is that it's not kids that have gotten worse. Arizona just adopted more rigorous standards to find out the real proficiency levels of our students. The scores that are currently out give a look at how the state fares, but separate district scores won't be released until early October. And parents won't receive their child's individual scores until later that month. Angie Schuster, Cronkite News. DPS is investigating another possible shooting along Interstate 10 this morning. A driver said his window was broken while he was on the freeway near 36th Avenue. No one was hurt, but this is the 10th report of a shooting along that stretch of I-10 the past two weeks. The case has had Doug, Governor Doug Ducey releasing this statement. The safety of Arizonians is the number one priority, and we are committed to apprehending those responsible for these crimes. But residents near the attacks are voicing their concerns. Cronkite News reporter Ivan Rodriguez joins us. Ivan, how is the community dealing with a possible serial shooter? I went to 27th uh, Avenue and McDowell Road, right near the freeway stretch where people have reported broken car windows and even holes in their vehicles. People I spoke to are concerned. In the surrounding Phoenix neighborhoods, a popular reaction and emotion to the I-10 shooter is one of fear. Many small businesses in the valley say they are a little more cautious, and many are telling their children and even grandchildren to be careful. 
Me siento muy preocupada. I feel very worried because I have children, grandchildren, who travel on the streets. Any, any action of violence in anything other than self-defense is, is horrible. It shouldn't be done. Yeah, it, I, I mean, it's good that nobody's been hurt yet, but there's property damage. There's inconvenienced lives. There's, there's people that I'm sure to some level have been traumatized by it. It's absolutely not right. I, I do hope he's caught and brought to justice. Silent Witness is now offering a $20,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. If you have a tip, call 480-WITNESS. In the Broadcast Center, Ivan Rodriguez, Cronkite News. Providing schools with more funding usually isn't the center of controversy. However, reporter Julia Thatcher found a new campaign that's turning into a big debate. Julia? This proposal that would increase funds available for schools K through 12 led to some pretty high opinions from both sides of the debate. That's because it would use money raised from legalizing marijuana. Colorado, Seattle, Alaska, and now Arizona. The Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol campaign is currently looking for signatures to put legalizing pot to a vote on the 2016 ballot. People like to use marijuana like they like to use a cocktail or beer. This is the, the same reason people use marijuana and they shouldn't be made criminals for that. The campaign says the taxes from legalizing marijuana would put $40 million into the K-12 through school systems. The Department of Education, however, doesn't agree that the proposed campaign will make the grass on the other side greener for the school systems. It's hypocritical to uh, tell our children and, and focus on teaching our children to stay away from drugs, but then to be funding their schools with money that comes from marijuana. The campaign is confident in their ability to gather enough signatures by the deadline and even comparing the campaign to prohibition. It's just as ridiculous as banning alcohol, if not more. Uh, this is the way to go, a legal market. Although recreational marijuana use is legal in four states, it is not recognized by the federal government, an idea that the Regulate Marijuana campaign thinks is outdated. It's really an antiquated thought of reefer madness. The Department of Education is working on a series of proposals tackling issues, including funding. We need to make education funding a priority so that it's not reliant upon taxes on vices. They will be ready to share those ideas with the public in early October. Signatures to get that on the ballot are due July 1st, 2016. In the Broadcast Center, Julia Thatcher, Cronkite News. Most Sun Devil football fans couldn't be happier to watch ASU take the field in Sun Devil Stadium this season. But some are going to have to watch their favorite team from a new location for the first time ever. Cronkite News reporter Rebecca Wynn found some longtime season ticket holders aren't too happy with their new stadium seats. While most college football stadiums are enjoying the last few quiet moments before the kickoff to a new season, at Arizona State's Sun Devil Stadium, things are a bit more chaotic. More than 10,000 season ticket holders needed to be relocated prior to the first home game. I myself have been a season ticket holder for probably about six, seven seasons now. Um, basically took them over from my father. We've been, you know, season ticket holders for 30 plus years. Art Taggart considers himself to be a diehard fan, but even this Sun Devil supporter wasn't too hot over his new section. Well, basically my whole thing is I'm, I don't like the Inferno, you know. That's basically what it boils down to. Uh, I don't think that uh, a student is going to have more passion than I do. The sections affected are select upper level sections in the north and south end zone, which will now be home to the new student section. Uh, you're dealing with a stadium renovation or a new stadium. Uh, it's an exciting time uh, because it's new and it, it also presents some challenges because you're dealing with uh, certain season ticket holders that are used to cert, uh, sitting in certain seats. And while some season ticket holders weren't happy about the construction here at Sun Devil Stadium, ASU did try to alleviate the situation by offering a new technology called Molina 3D, in which any ticket in the entire stadium could be viewed in a 3D view before being purchased for the season. We invested in this technology because when you're dealing with that large number of people, is we wanted to put the process in their hands. The entire $256 million project is slated to be finished by the Sun Devils 2017 season kickoff. In Tempe, I'm Rebecca Wynn, Cronkite News. At ASU, we believe the most important semester is the one that starts after you get your diploma, the one called life. So we work hard to help our alumni thrive, teaching them the importance of not only achieving their goals, but exceeding them. With innovative programs that embrace hands-on learning, that encourages real-world growth. 
our alumni know it can be the education of a lifetime. For a lifetime. For more information, asu.edu. I'm an urban gardener. I'm a PhD student in Criminology Law and Society. I have an expertise in construction history. I also happen to be a swing dancer. Oh, and I'm a source. And I really like being a source. Great journalism requires great sources, and we want you to be one of them. Arizona PBS is building a network of viewers, people with insight into the stories we cover and the stories we should cover. Explore what it means to be a source for the Arizona PBS Public Insight Network at azpbs.org slash pin. Are you a news junkie, history buff, science or nature lover? Then discover a world, an entire channel devoted to bringing the world home to Arizona. Watch 8 World on Cox 88 or over the air via antenna on 8.3. To find out how to tune into 8 World through your satellite or another cable provider, visit azpbs.org slash world or call 602-496-2308. Discover your world. 8 World. See this patio? There used to be a motorcycle sitting there, a bike I didn't use and didn't want, so I donated it to public television, and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the Vehicle Donation Program. 8 is Arizona PBS, a service of Arizona State University. Welcome back to At Cronkite News, our weekly refresh. Now, here's our digital download from cronkitenews.azpbs.org. The top clicks on stories, photos, and infographics making news across Arizona. Now, here's an At Cronkite News Pick of the Week, a favorite from the Cronkite News staff. Arizona is currently known as the Grand Canyon State, but could that be changing soon? Reporter Juliet Thatcher took a look at a new plan proposed by Governor Doug Ducey. Lots of ideas come to mind when people think of the Grand Canyon State, some good, some bad, but a new rebranding campaign is looking to clean up and create a more positive image for Arizona. Temperatures higher than the... <laughs> This is so funny stuff. Building the Great Wall of Mexico. Yeah, that's funny. What happens in Tent City stays in Tent City? Absolutely. Probably not the response Governor Doug Ducey thought he would get when he asked the public for slogan ideas for the new rebranding campaign. People shared their slogans using hashtag rebrandaz. The $250,000 plan aims to clean up the image for the Grand Canyon State. People have certain negative reservations buried deep in their, in their psyche, and they talk to people and they get a sense of the uh, um, popular opinions, those things are gonna come out, so they do need to be addressed. The Arizona Commerce Authority is spearheading the campaign. President and CEO Sandra Watson is hopeful the new campaign will benefit the state. However, the question we had was, why now? It's important that we begin to establish an identity for the state of Arizona. It's important that we don't allow others to define who Arizona is. Currently, there is no set timeline for the campaign, but the ACA hopes to announce a full brand guideline in late fall of this year. The project is an investment in our future. It will allow us to establish a single selling point for the state of Arizona, create a value proposition that we can communicate to the world. The ACA said they would love to hear ideas or reasons why you love Arizona, and those can be submitted directly to them using hashtag PromoteAZ. Although at the end of the day there will be a new slogan and logo, the ACA said they will also look to find key elements in our state to focus on, specifically noting our involvement in aerospace and defense and vibrant high-tech communities. In the Broadcast Center, I'm Julia Thatcher, Cronkite News. Cronkite News tracks your likes, tweets, and shares from all our social sites to bring you this news special at Cronkite News, our weekly refresh. Join the conversation so you choose the news. 
Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and log on to cronkitenews.azpbs.org for top Arizona stories anytime. Are you a news junkie, history buff, science or nature lover? Then discover a world, an entire channel devoted to bringing the world home to Arizona. Watch 8 World on Cox 88 or over the air via antenna on 8.3. To find out how to tune into 8 World through your satellite or another cable provider, visit azpbs.org slash world or call 602-496-2308. Discover your world. 8 World. See this flower garden? There used to be a car sitting there, a car I didn't use and didn't want. So I donated it to public television and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the vehicle donation program. Hi, I'm Judy Woodruff, co-anchor of the PBS NewsHour. Preparing the next generation of journalists has never been more important than it is now. With its groundbreaking partnership with Arizona PBS, the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at ASU is revolutionizing journalism education to provide students with a real opportunity to work and learn under the supervision of veteran journalists, producers, directors, and editors on newscasts, investigative stories, and documentary productions. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS reinventing journalism education in the digital age.